Hello, listeners. My name is Eileen Durfee from Creatrix Solutions, and I'm here with a special guest today, Dr. Neil Stumpf. And I met him years ago when he was working um, with Dr. Sugar. Now, I talk a lot about Dr. Sugar and the things he's done for me with spinal fitness. And I invited Neil to talk a little bit about his experience with Dr. Sugar. And now he's uh, a chiropractor. Uh, when I met him, I think he was a student and uh, learning under Dr. Sugar. And uh, Dr. Sugar passed away in 2016. And one of my passions is to teach people about spinal fitness because of all my back pain and the history that I've been through. So without further ado, I'd like you to meet uh, Dr. Neil Stump. He can tell a little bit about himself to you. Yeah, I got interested in chiropractic after I met with Dr. Sugar. Uh, yeah, I had gone through some of his uh, treatment plan at the time, and it, w- it was interesting, yeah, the way he kind of had an engineered model of how the spine and body should work and the forces that were placed on the body. Yeah, so that, that was pretty interesting at the time. Yeah, yeah um, I met him in 1978, you know, summer of... 76, I grew nine inches in three months. I was in constant pain before a car ran me over when I was in a parking lot. And then, you know, I could just hardly breathe, couldn't lift my arms. I've been to, you know, neurologists and all this other stuff. And an old chiropractor named Leon Inch said, oh, you've got to go see Dr. Sugar. He can rehabilitate you with exercises. And that was before Mm -hmm. he came up with the power cushion, um, but he would have you stand up and do a pelvic tilt. And he had you do some rotations and then lay over specially rolled towels so that your muscles could relax. And uh, so lo and behold, you know, I, got restored function, got out of pain. And, uh, you know, we became friends for years until he moved from Pasco down to where you're at and when you met him. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. <laughs> you know, I know that he worked with the Olympic team in Colorado and then with Ron O'Neill from the New England Patriots and Smitty from York Barbell trying to figure out about this shape. Why did it give you, you know, the advantage? So can you tell us a little bit about your experience with Dr. Sugar? Were you involved in that at all? Or were you uh, later, because I know he worked with the the state of Washington and got uh, the National Strength and Conditioning Association peer review approved. So he offered continuing education credits for professionals. So tell us where you kind of interjected in that timeline. Yeah. So I came in most for the most part, it was a little bit more afterwards when he was kind of uh, more retired and slowing down a little bit. But um, what we were working on at the time was kind of uh, improvement of his, uh, I suppose, lecture material as far as making it more accessible. So for a lot of what we've been, we were doing was to work on um, kind of a lecture presentation that could be given a little more easily there. Yeah. Right. And by that time, he had already developed the power cushion and the power equipment, I think. So that was already in use at that time. Yeah, it's a strange concept, actually. Well, I mean, it makes a lot of sense now that I've really studied it and experienced mm-hmm. it. But for even common chiropractors, they're not really trained in in spinal spinal biomechanics and how to give somebody that S shaped curve. Yeah, it's not it's not quite as understood uh, throughout the industry. I think whether it's the chiropractors or the or the physical therapist either. Right. Now I just gave a demonstration because I've got the new power cushion. It. It has a slanted edge for your Mm -hmm. forearms to rest on. It's got a textured bottom. The groove goes down further so a shorter person can still get where the spinosal float and catch those transverse process. 
and where the neck piece will attach onto it instead of having to balance a towel on top of it. And there's yeah. this guy that he was a prior athlete. He had two torn hamstrings and a quad muscle. And the guy could just barely bend over. You know, so I did mm -hmm. the evaluation that Dr. Sugar came up with, you know, to fill your hamstrings, to bend over, you know, to jump, to, you know, turn your head, put your arms up, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And every single person before this guy, I'd always get two, four, six, one guy, 11 inches of reach just in one set of exercises. I mean, that's like three, that's like five to 10 reps of the sit up, the pelvic tilt, and the neck flexion. And we're getting that. This guy, of course, I didn't put weight on him at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so then afterwards, what just came in the mail was my force applicators that just clamp onto an ordinary barbell. So we had mm -hmm. him try that. And when we got the force on him on the sit up, he gained like three inches when he bent over. He was just like amazed. So this leverage where you're putting force on top of the body and then your muscles, the pulling the direction of pull with the muscles like Dr. Sugar used to talk about does something mm -hmm. special to the bones. Can you maybe explain that? Cause I know you wrote the lecture materials of trying to have people understand this concept. Yeah. A lot of it is, um, I suppose it helps to reflexively relax the muscles when they're in the proper position as it takes strain off the body uh, overall. Yeah. So when your body doesn't have quite the correct S-shaped curvature, the curves aren't quite as deep as they ought to be, they're, in addition to the stiffness you have just from being, being in that position, you'll have the muscles are kind of contracting and in order to maintain stability in that area, for instance, to keep the body from falling over, you know, keep your posture upright. But uh, when they're contracted like this, you're losing, you're losing your ability to move as well because they, they've got to maintain that position rather than contributing to active movement. So I was reading in some of the materials uh, about how, you know, because you can't change the muscle attachments to bones. Yeah. So when they aren't in that shape, like you said, they're contracting. But like when you go, your stride length, for instance, can't be as long it'll land, you know, your leg will land prematurely. And then about the fast muscle twitch recruitment. So you, you, you know, you're not going to jump as high. You're not going to run as fast. Uh, you know, so if you can explain a little bit more about that to us. Yeah. So about those, uh, the muscle con contribution to the area. Yeah. Basically um, when, Dr. Sugar had the idea and then from his uh, engineering that the there are groups of muscles that should be doing the postural work. And these are the longer, the shorter twitch muscles that um, do long term contractions, whereas the uh, fast twitch muscles should be reserved for the active movement. But he found that when the posture was too, too head forward, too straight without these S, without these uh, curvatures that the um, the uh, fast twitch muscles would convert over into the slower twitch. And so this is, this is a problem for you since you don't have them available for active movement and it resulted in less sports performance, for instance, that was his, uh, that was kind of his metric there that he was using a lot of the time was the, you know, basically this, the performance, this is the football performance and such, how hard people can hit, how long they could uh, stay in the game, things like this, their endurance and such. Right. Now he also talked about this teeter totter effect i mean to justify mathematically why is the s-shaped posture i mean i bought a full-size mannequin and tried a, you know a skeleton and tried to bend it into correct posture and it's impossible none of the uh spinal you know models yeah, out cool. there display ideal curvature so it, it's like so yeah. unknown <laughs> well it, yeah they're they don't really take that into account with the models there. You know, I know when you worked with him, part of the passive home maintenance that he would have people do would be to take a bath towel and roll it in, you know, to fold it in half and then roll it in. So there was a space in between there so that yeah. spinous 
could be in there, but the edges of the transverse process would be supported so that you'd lay down and, you know, the muscles could relax then. So can you yeah. explain about that twisting and how that really therapeutically worked for people? In, in regards to the towel rolls? Yeah, and and letting that spinous float and uh, for just the yeah the, the, the concern was uh, so, so I suppose you could do some of these towel roll exercises without that that center uh, the center spot, which um, most chiropractors would be doing that, but. Uh, if you don't have that center spot in there, the spinous will lay right onto it. And there's concern that it would cause a rotation into the, in the neck or the back, wh whichever you're doing at the time, um, but as well as uneven pressure on it. So having the having that little, um, I guess, the, the, the soft spot, the edge in there, that will let the spinous rest. And then, you know, you have the joint supported by the pillars of the neck and the back. Right. So one of the things that, Dr. Sugar always talked about is having a neck cushion with the groove to attach to the power cushion. And he gave me like he had these wooden things with like a groove so that you could have the vertebrae float. So what yeah. I did is I made these cushions that are the soft kind of squishy, but, but they're a lot firmer than a towel. But so the spinous mm -hmm. can float here. Yep. And so I started doing, I actually used my 3D printer and printed molds and then I poured foam ones for prototypes initially. So I tried all these different diameters and just the, the general population, I found like you needed to go from two and three quarters up to the three and three quarters and then go in half inch increments in between and then have the, you know, the different densities and mm -hmm. the difference that I noticed in these rolls from the towels. And I don't know, I sent you some, you know, cushions to try. I don't know if you've done the back twist and laid over them yet, but yeah, we've been if, lying on them. They're, yeah, they, they work well. Yeah. They hold up, they hold together better than the towels did. They were always had the issue of unrolling basically. Always right. Apart, yeah. I, I mean, I used to use rubber bands on the ends and everything. Yep. But after I find, you know, after I get the set that I'm really comfortable with, then I'll like go up a diameter or up a density. But when I'm mm -hmm. laying there, I literally hear my bones move. And yep. I went and did a demo with uh, Dr. Adam Evans. He's a chiropractor here that I go to. He does some pedibon moves as well as, which mm -hmm. is, you know, what I like. So he's just, he just came back, you know, his whole family on these thing and all their bones are moving, just laying there relaxing. <laughs> he's just totally blown away, you know, with the equipment, uh, you know, to encourage that curvature. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now about the, the pelvic tilt and the guides, you know, that you wrote and explained, I know that the, the pelvic tilt is more segmental posture correction. Can you explain that to us? So the pelvic tilt, we were... We were doing that after the sit-up exercises on the power cushion, and the, the point of that was to set the uh, set the last vertebrae as well as the pelvis into alignment there. Um, yeah, you know, when Doctor Sugar, when I was working with Doctor Sugar, he was telling me more that the uh, the uh, sit up exercise is real good for the back, but potentially while doing that exercise, it was concerned that the uh, pelvis would slip out of alignment with the rest of the back, and this would help to. Uh, and when you do the pelvic tilt after with the weight, it helps to set it back against the the spine there. You know, when I'm exercising, I feel best when I do the sit up first. I I didn't know yeah. that the order in so. which we were supposed to be doing that, <laughs> so. And for the reasons, yeah. so that's great. I know he would have people do the neck flexion, you know, just with their hands. Years ago, we used to have an old catcher's mask. That catcher's mask would, you know, when you put pressure on it, would be flattening your nose and it was so uncomfortable. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I came up with the neck shaper, which has got these cushioned pads. 
he had something <laughs> similar to this that yeah. attached on the weight stack machine. So I basically took his distance and shape of where your chin and your forehead pad is. So I'd still have mm -hmm. the mathematical, you know, distance. So that way we could do it standing up, you know, and I put it as a one inch bar so you can put, you know, weights on here, but this actually clamps on an ordinary barbell. Mm -hmm. And, and so this, you know, with forward head posture, you know, when my little exercise monitor says drink water and get up, and move around. And I've been at my desk and I just whip out some of these to reverse that gravity, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. And I know Dr. Sugar taught doing this also standing up and you could see how your, your low back curve would actually increase. So I don't know if you want to talk about the muscles or what it's actually doing when you do the neck flexion. Well, I suppose more with the, once you've got your neck in the, when you get the flexion exercise, once you've got your neck in the reverse portion where it's a, you pull it back, that, uh, that it basically gives you the maximum neck uh, curvature that you'll have at the time there. So that when you're in that position, if you feel your neck, you should feel that, um, although you're working, your neck muscles in the back are actually relaxed. And this is again, because they're, you know, they're not having to work in that position, which um, they normally shouldn't be uh postural muscles necessarily they should be there for movement um but additionally when you're when you're in that position if you um if you look at your back muscles you'll find that they should be relaxed as well if you're able to kind of get your center of gravity back far enough to, to where the, the those uh movement muscles can relax and these would be the paraspinals right next to the spine in the back and the neck as well uh, but but yes um so that's a that was one of the big demonstrated changes that you could have is when you're standing up and doing this especially, um, you can put the hands on the back. You'll feel it totally relax, and often this will cut back on back pain because they're the you know, the muscles that contribute so much to that. Yeah, so those paraspinal support muscles. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, for years I had such rounded shoulders, and you know, being so tall and everything, it's like you know, it's like put your shoulders back. You know, after mm -hmm. I really started, you know, so I've known about this for how many years, but how dedicated have I been to these exercises? You know, not so dedicated, but yep. so now that I've really been working on all of my exercises, my spinal fitness exercises, I've noticed that if I feel like I'm slumping or anything, just going like that to get my head over my pelvis so it's more centered my shoulders automatically go back and then my you know back muscles you know relax so it's really a whole different you know mentality for posture have you seen a lot of these uh functional patterns where they're taking people with scoliosis and you know just these different forward haired postures, but they're getting them more to neutral. They're not like training them to get the S shaped curve, but they are reducing pain. Um, and I, yeah. Know yeah. Within the chiropractic uh, practice, I suppose that much of the, um, much of the field has gone towards uh, just kind of improving motion, which will reduce pain. This is helpful. I mean, just get the motion going, but um they, they somewhat drifted away from improving posture and position. And there's not quite as much a focus on that as there used to be in the past. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, and I suppose to some degree, this is that there hasn't really been the tools available. Dr. Sugar has really spent a lot of time in, you know, investing in that to have the power cushion and the, the even the neck and the neck towels. So yeah, there's, um, Without these kind of tools available, it's it's actually fairly difficult to improve posture. I mean, like in, for instance, you can adjust the neck; it'll it'll move, and it'll if you can get it to hold that, it'll help out some. But it's it's difficult to you know when people go back to doing their their daily lives, doing the computer work and the phones and such. Now it's it's difficult to get it to stick. Whereas um you know if you can give them something to take home, even the towel roll, but but you know the better formed rolls that we have now, you can get it to stick a lot better. You see much more of an impact over time. Right. You know, so now it's like getting people back to the same thing that Dr. Sugar had, you know, because he worked on this. He had the power cushion in what the late eighties, early nineties. Yeah. And <laughs> you, you know, the new England Patriots had it. 
Mm -hmm. And then trainers went from there to the New York Giants, the Jets, the Dallas Cowboys. But it's like they didn't want their competition having the best widget that would give them, you know, any advantage over them. And so it was just kind of like, a, you know, Dr. Sugar was more of a mad scientist. You know, he mm -hmm. just loved, you know, the math and proving all of that. Uh, but it just never really took off. Now, yeah. what about uh, the people at the National Strength and Conditioning Association? Are there any of those people around who really understood Dr. Sugar's science? Uh, do you know of any of the guys there that... Uh, I haven't been so much in touch with them. Um We've talked a little bit with uh, some of the Olympics, Olympic team there as well, and they used it. But um, my understanding was they had trouble getting the uh, the higher ups to kind of really invest much more in this. So they kind of used it on their own personal basis for their own teams, but not necessarily. It didn't get necessarily throughout the whole Olympics, uh, Olympic right. Uh, organization. Right. Yeah, it was, it, it was always hard to push. And there were, I guess, um, everywhere there were kind of agendas that, uh, you know, be hard to get the people to change. Even the military, I think he had trouble with them, too. Like, he he would have, um, I guess he had members of special forces come through and such, you know, even Marines and everyone else. But they wouldn't, uh, they'd get better and then wouldn't tell anybody because they uh, couldn't report that they had an injury. Otherwise, they'd be taken off. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so they would just... Uh, they would just keep themselves in shape, but they couldn't necessarily report this uh, any, to you know anyone else in the command structure. Right. Well, I know he also talked a lot about astronauts because of lack of gravity and being able to use this equipment. Because you always see the astronauts when they're getting ready to fly away. You know, you see the pod land in the ocean, but you never see the astronaut because they're like carrying yeah. off in stretchers because they have no posture. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, uh, yeah, so NASA actually, uh, NASA brought this up a little bit. Um, when we were looking around, they actually had some articles in their research into this. Uh, it turns out without gravity, um, you, you do lose the, the curvatures fairly quickly Yeah, without the force of gravity on the body. And of right. course, um, it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> I mean, you, know, you, you, uh, you, need the, you need the curvatures because of gravity, but uh, you, know, you, you wear out over time as well. So, yeah, I've uh, really noticed a difference. Um, I try to do my exercises like at least three days a week. Now, what would you say would be the ideal routine for someone who's kind of like an ordinary worker that, you know, is basically letting gravity beat on them because of, you know, working at a desk or doing repetitive motions or stuff like that. Uh, what kind of program would you put someone on that, you know, would come to see you? Well, if they were willing to invest in it, you know, to have them do a little more, <laughs> maybe perhaps every day <laughs> to start with. Um, right. But people have trouble doing exercise. Uh, if you can, you know, yeah, people have trouble keeping up with these exercise programs. The interesting thing with this was, though, it, it worked really quick. You, know, you, you wouldn't have to have people on it like uh, that frequently to get the, the impacts there. I mean, despite them going back to the phones and back to work again, even you know, like even once a week, would uh, you'd still see improvements with it. Right. But, but if you could get somebody that was in better health and, you know, was uh, interested in really getting quick results, um, you, you could have them do it every day and get them you can get, you know, quite a ways along with that. Right. Now, from everything I've read, Dr. Sugar would say start with five to 10 reps. If that was causing strain, don't do more. And then, you know, he, he mentioned somewhere I read about working, you know, three to five times a week over the course of eight to 12 weeks, building up to 100 reps, potentially of like mm -hmm. a sit up or a pelvic tilt. Yeah. He did, he did get a little more aggressive with it when, in the later years, though. So, you know, it was more, um, of course, he was researching and he had to be a little careful at first. But then, you know, he developed it. He said that he saw there weren't really a lot of problems that came with this. You know, there weren't a lot of reactions like some other other modalities may have. So, uh, so what was his yeah. last recommendation to do these, 
you know, daily. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think he he went basically every day with us. He could do it more than once a day. I mean, if for sit ups and such, there it's um the way the power cushion is designed. It's it's the idealized posture of the body. So there really isn't uh, you w wouldn't really overdo it necessarily. I mean, you could lie on the power cushion as well and get benefit from that too. Yeah, so there okay. it, um it won't put an excess curve in your body. It's it's just it's the correct curvature that it should have been. Yeah, for a you know for an average person. Okay. Uh, w when you're trying to uh, initially adopt that after having, you know, a fairly flat neck and back, though, um, you do want you want to go um, as much as your kind of uh, body will allow. And typically for older patients, that would uh, you wouldn't be able to do quite as much, for instance, a weight, which was the bigger thing was, you know, when when you add weight to the body, you can't add quite as much initially. And you need a little longer time to uh, to kind of let the body adapt to it. But younger patients, you know, maybe someone who's in high school, uh, high school, college, you know, you you go very aggressive with this. Right. And they'll get sore, but, you know, you can go fairly aggressive yeah, and, and get and get the quick results. Right. I've had people like arch over the power cushion. And it's almost like you have to put a neck collar on them because they can't yeah. lay back, you know, with the weight of their head. And so it's just, I guess, starting someone where they're at and then slowly you know, progressing from there. But yeah, I remember he was telling me he had a, well, as a comparison, he had a patient in, I think, their uh, 90s that was, uh, it took about a year, but the improvement they had was they, they were um, they were basically able to walk up and down their stairs where they couldn't have previously. And, you know, they're much more stable. I mean, they didn't have the falls that they had in the past, which is very good. But but then when I did, when I went through his program, I was able to get basically, it took about, um, I think I was able to triple my strength in about a month. I was fairly young at the time. So. Right. But yeah, we went, we went up to the whole hundred pounds with the, the pelvic uh, tilt after that. So, I mean, yeah, even the sit up too. So it can be quick uh, depending on you know how flexible somebody is and how adaptable they are to the exercises. Right. Well, yeah, he had, I had his first prototype robotic, the electric one that had the real yep. short range. That's what I had in the, uh, 1980s i got that from him mm -hmm. and so i used it until the motor burnt out uh, i think i lost the motor in the late 90s and then i was without anything then i was like filling up like naga hide vinyl i was sewing sacks and filling it with like sand so mm -hmm. then i could put it on my chest and i could do you know the exercises that way to get you know to get some resistance Mm -hmm. And I had the uh, blue power cushion and the black power cushion. So I had the hard, you know, and the medium one. And mm -hmm. so I've, you know, held on to those, you know, and use those intermittently. And it's just, it's just made a big difference. And so going from somebody who's been in chronic pain, you know, where other people would say you can't recover from that you know, to using his program. And now I'm 60 years old. And I mean, I don't have any pain in my body, even though I still go to the chiropractor like a couple times a week, not a week, mm -hmm. a month and, you know, get adjusted. Cause like, if you look at x-rays of me, I don't have worn up bone edges. My discs are all good. You know, it's just because of the years of chiropractic and, you know, being some, you know, I guess in recent years, I've been more consistent with these exercises, but uh, yeah, it's just the S shaped curve is just so important because I actually became a practitioner for hair analysis. So, you know, looking at the adrenal and the thyroid gland for energy production and really everything's about energy at the cell level. And we get right down to think about it. What is robbing your body of the most energy? It's the structure. It's all these tight muscles. Everyone's like drinking down coffee and waking up fatigued. It's the number one complaint. And so if we, we can get people the S-shaped posture, I think there's going to be a lot of health problems that are going to improve. You know, of course, you being a chiropractor, you could tell us all day long about the nerves being pinched and, you know, all that, how that translates into health issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well, is there anything else that you think we should tell, you know, the listeners about for their, you know, to encourage them to start this program? I suppose we haven't gone over too much on the, some of the benefits of adopting the S-shaped curvature. I mean, we've talked about the performance, but the, maybe why the performance, what the performance derives from. So some of this, uh, I suppose the, the basic point of it all is to minimize the force on the body. The, adopting this S-shaped curvature. So that's that's the big reason, right? Is it, it allows the muscles to relax because they got less to handle. It allows uh, less less wear and tear on the spine because they got less weight to take up. Yeah, less force in total. And I suppose if you're you're talking to the maybe the average person, uh, what short sort of back shape they think they they say you want to have a straight back, but you know, kind of what what does that really mean? You know, if you're talking about literally straight. Uh, from Dr. Sugar's work, we know that that puts more weight on the spine, more force on the spine. Basically being the reason is that your your back is in the back. It's not right in the center of your body. <laughs> Since your spine is in the back, if, if it's literally straight, then you've got to use much more muscle effort to keep yourself upright. And this just translates into having more, uh, you know, more wear on the spine, more force there. So the, you know, over time, the joints wear out quicker, the muscles just can't handle it and they give up and you know, they get the pain as well. They, they let you know that way. <laughs> If you can't handle it. And so you can reduce this weight by applying curvatures to the spine, the correct curvatures, you know, having the, I guess the, the back, the back curvature of the neck and the low back, and then the you know, kyphotic curve of the mid back there, which would be the other way. And in doing this, it, uh, it basically moves the center of gravity forward until it's kind of right in the middle of the body. So, and, and when it's balanced that way, there's a, there's much less effort needed to maintain that, maintain that shape. Yeah. So the, um, the mus the postural muscles, these, uh, slower muscles can, can just work to maintain that. And you have the, uh, the fast switch muscles are just reserved for your activities. Yeah. So, so that, that kind of gives it, gives a lot of the strength there. One of the yeah. things that I noticed, uh, from studying all of his literature was that when you have the S-shaped force, I mean the S-shaped curves, the sheer force kind of goes to where it pushes bone on bone, the facet bones. Which they take up a lot of the, uh, they take up a lot of the, well, the shear force there, which is created from having them, um, from having that posture. Basically in, in the S-shaped curve, um, yeah, I suppose there's a there's a weight gets um instead of being compressed as if it were fully straight like we talked about earlier, it gets applied to the uh, the muscles, the ligaments, and then those uh, facet joints in the back, the the bones as well. Yeah, so they will uh, they'll prevent prevent it from sliding back posteriorly, and then the ligaments will prevent it from going forward. But uh, there's some people have some concern that having it that way, there's too much force on the facets. They, they, you know, some people get these spondies, I guess. But uh, when you have the idealized back curvatures, that it's, it's still minimized the force on the facets, even compared to, you know, having a, having a forward posture, you know, support on the back. Yeah, right. These spondies aren't quite as much of a concern if you've got these curvatures as they would be otherwise, despite the, you know, the weight on them. And then when you lose the curvature, it's like the direction of shear goes the opposite way. Yeah, it will go and forward so instead of back into the bones. And in that case, you you don't have the bone support, you got the ligament support instead. And they, um, they'll stretch over time, they'll get weak, and they'll stretch more than they should. And it's, this leads to well, typically ligament injury, but you can also lead to the whole joint injury and arthritis building with uh, you know, excess movement in that direction you know, where the, the joint movement isn't kept tight. Right. So, yeah. And, and, you know, these exercises where they're creating posterior shear, it's like it's so mm -hmm. much easier for the vertebrae to actually get dislocated or like the ligaments, like the the discs, they're like acting as a ligament, right, in the spine. So yeah, that yeah. they can they can become herniated actually much easier when you don't have the S-shaped curve. Yeah, that was uh, an interesting part is that it's, um, it, it, without looking at the joints, you'd suppose that the weight and difference might not be so much, but it's actually quite a bit. It's uh, multiplied quite a bit over when, when you start losing these curvatures that uh, absorb the, the force of everything. And I don't have it in front of me right now, but I think it was uh, even as much as triple as much weight. Right. Yeah, there's a, a lot of information that that 
you did in those PowerPoint slides. And uh, I've been working to rewrite some of those, you know, because of copyright issues and to being able to share this knowledge with other people. The thing that I love to do, though, is to demonstrate with mm -hmm. people um, because they might not understand all this science, but you can get them hooked on wanting to do the exercises because the results are so immediate. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, if you just only do 10 reps of each once, yeah, you might get three inches of mobility or up to 11 inches of reach increase and feel like mm -hmm. you're taller and lighter, you know, so doing it once mm -hmm. isn't going to, you know, establish those curves. Yeah, I mean, you got to make it a habit, otherwise it doesn't stick. But what, what you, like what you found is that you, you do it once and you do get quite a benefit because it, uh, it aligns things for to be the most efficient. So, you, I mean, even if you just um, adopt the posture without doing the exercise, you'll still get benefit from it because that, that positioning um, reduces the forces on the body and kind of maximizes how much you can uh, apply as well. Like we talked about pulling your neck back, how it relaxes everything right away because then it just doesn't have to work. So it doesn't. Right. So, so immediately you'll get the benefit. Right. So it's just getting the body to feel comfortable in that position. Yeah, because uh, someone who hasn't done these exercises, they, you know, someone who's not, who's a fairly flexible, they can adopt the position, but uh, they got to work a little too hard to keep it. When you put the position into the body and the spine there, then it doesn't have to work as hard and you'll feel much more comfortable with it and you, you, know, you won't give it up so easy. Right. So th this equipment is really critical. And, and so now that, uh, I've got a power cushion, you know, prototypes ready. Mm -hmm. I'll be sending you some more stuff so that you can check them out and try them. And the goal is to start teaching professionals, demonstrating, um, you know, getting the word out there. Maybe, maybe this is the time where people will accept it, you know, and use it. Because I think that our physical education systems of how we're training our children, the exercises that we're having them do, we're, we're actually limiting their ability to get this S-shaped curve. And yeah, there's been, uh, well, I guess with the advances in technology, it's kind of gone the other way <laughs> a little bit. Um, <laughs> These phones have been pretty bad on the bodies. Oh yeah, they're all like, oh yeah. man. Yeah, the more so than more, more so, so than the computers and books were even. <laughs> right, right. Well, do you have a website or you're part of a clinic in Oregon? Do you want to give your information for the listeners? Uh, maybe there's some listeners there locally that, that if they need a chiropractor, they can come see you. Yeah, so currently we're working with Accident Wellness Chiropractic. So I've been with them for a few years so far. Focus primarily on auto accidents, but uh, we do healthcare as well. Right. And uh, what area are you in? In the southeast Portland, I think so. Okay. All right. Yeah. Right over there. Well, thank you so much for joining me mm -hmm. today to talk about some of these things. And I mm -hmm. uh, look forward to getting your input on some of the new equipment. It's a big step up from some of the previous <laughs> equipment we've had. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's much more usable just in general. I mean, there's things to work out with it, but yeah, it's, it's uh, much nicer having it not flatten out on you either. So what did you think about the backtrack? I it's, uh, it's different, it's good, yeah. It, it's, uh, it really helps to set the ribs in place. <laughs> It's been a problem because the, the the easiest way to do it at home has been with a foam roller, which it's very it is very similar to a foam roller, but uh, you can't do you can't do both sides at the same time <laughs> with a standard foam roller. Oh yeah, for adjusting ribs. Yeah, it's 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 easy. Yeah. Well, when I was in um, San Francisco, I was on a motorized bicycle, and I was talking to my phone, not paying attention. And I was where it said no bicycles allowed, but there were people like right behind me coming up on me. And so I had to stop mm -hmm. really fast and I put my foot down, but there was this big well there. So my foot didn't land on anything. And I slammed right into the guardrail, right on my rib, my right rib. 
Mm-hmm. Of course, I'd been to the chiropractor, did craniosacral therapy, and I still could barely like put my hand like here without wincing pain. And then mm-hmm. my prototype came on my uh, backtrack. Of course, the hard one killed me. I couldn't even lay over it. I was so injured. So I got on the mm-hmm. orange one that was softer and I rolled on that by day two, it put all my ribs in and I had no pain at all whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I fell in love with this thing. This is like pretty amazing. So uh, when do you think the best time, cause we talked about doing the sit up pelvic tilt, then the neck flexion, when would you do this one? Well, for someone who doesn't have an injury, I mean, you could do it with the whole set. I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, you could do, you could do it after the, uh, after the sit up would be a good time to do that. And so if you want to do those three in order, the sit up, the, the backtrack, and then the pelvic tilt. Okay. Yeah. Be a good right. order. Well, thank you so much yeah. for your wisdom. And, mm-hmm. uh, we'll have to, uh, when I, I'm down that area. I'll have to come down and see you. But like I said, I'll be yep, getting yep. you uh, a new power cushion with the neck attachment to it real soon. Well, thanks. The the new one looks uh looks a lot more a lot more put together than some of the previous ones. <laughs> yeah, and it's the surface is smooth too, so you can clean it. Because mm-hmm. yep. some of the other ones that there was a lot of bubbles in the foam when they yeah. mixed it and and then the surface texture wasn't you know ideal i mean it was it was, a, it was about the best at the time but it's been a few years things have gotten better right well those were poured with what they call a mold that has a backing mm-hmm. that had like a silicone liner so yeah. with the s- silicone liners they only produce so many parts and then you throw Mm -hmm. them away. Or if they're sitting on the shelf, there's only so long before that material deteriorates. Mm -hmm. So what I did with these products is I paid all the extra money and had them cut out of all the molds out of aluminum. Mm -hmm. So they're forever molds. Mm -hmm. We never have to replace them. And uh, then it produces this really nice, smooth, you know, consistent surface and um, for the, I don't know if you noticed or not, but for the, the cushions that have the groove in them, mm-hmm. ordinarily you could have just snapped those in half because of that shape. But inside these little holes right here, there's a wooden dowel. Mm-hmm. So nobody can break them in half. So yep, these are yep. going to hold, these are going to hold up and be just fine. I suppose I, they don't have a UV protectant on them, so you couldn't just like leave them outdoors in the rain and the sun and you know and all that. But yeah. For ordinary use indoors, they'll they'll really hold up. And now mm-hmm. I've had some like a six foot eight major league baseball pitcher, and uh, because of the weight of his body, because he's a big guy, mm-hmm. uh, the the blue ones didn't work for him because mm-hmm. they would they would still squish. They were soft enough with all that weight to squish. So we find with the with the bigger uh, people, especially the athletes, this hard works really well for them mm-hmm. uh, or the medium. Yeah. But yeah. So all mm-hmm. right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. And. Uh, We'll uh, talk again soon. 